Dr. Paul Marciano speaks with us about his RESPECT model and how it can help increase employee engagement in any organization. Hi, I'm Dr. Paul Marciano, founder and president of Whiteboard LLC, human relations consulting firm. I have my master's and PhD in clinical psychology from Yale University and I've taught graduate and undergraduate courses at Yale, Princeton, and Davidson College. I am passionate about organizational development and back in 2004 created the RESPECT model to help organizations transform their leadership into individuals who engage employees. The RESPECT model is used today in organizations from small to large with hundreds of thousands of employees to help to engage them and transform the relationship between the employee and their work. I've seen the difference that this model can make in organizations and I hope that you too will see the potential that it has to not only foster high levels of engagement for your employees but to significantly transform the relationship between the leadership and the employees. For me, the key to increasing engagement is to impact the culture. Again, it's not about a program that is going to be a temporary fix on some behavior. It's about how do we impact the culture of the organization to lead to one that's engaging. And that's how I come upon the RESPECT model. Now, if you think about RESPECT, who here, what, what did you, how did you learn about RESPECT as a child? Who taught you about RESPECT? By your parents, great. So what did your parents teach you about respect? Okay, so the golden rule, right? Absolutely. Who, who are you supposed to respect? Everyone. Elders? Okay, yes, but specifically, we always learn. Who? Teachers. Teachers. Police officers, members of the clergy, right? Um, our our um, military personnel. Right? Then we're, what are we supposed to respect? We're supposed to respect things like the Pledge of Allegiance, the flag. We're supposed to respect our toys, our stuff, and the stuff of others. Right? And I remember in ways about how do you show respect by looking at people in the eye when you speak with them. I remember very clearly when I was about four years old and I uh, went to visit my grandfather and my father was sitting in the car my, my grandfather was the first immigration uh, from Italy, and my father was practicing shaking my hand and saying, you're going to go show respect to your grandfather, right? So this idea of respect is actually one that we learn about from a very young age and one that actually plays itself out in our life in various ways. In fact, um, I've never met anybody who said they didn't care about being respected. Right? If you can think about a time in your life when you were friends with somebody or a coworker with somebody, you thought you had a good relationship, and you then found out they were speaking poorly about you behind your back, my, what I think happens is you disengage from that person. When you feel disrespected, you disengage physically and psychologically from that person. Now, as we grow in relationships and we find out things about somebody that are increase our respect for them. For example, they've overcome some challenges in their life. Perhaps they um, do sort of, you know, maybe some volunteer work. Um, when you meet somebody who's a member maybe of the, of the military who served our country, um, somebody who's given generously to charity, whatever it may be, as we learn about people and we learn things about them that make us respect them more, we engage with those people. We want to build closer relationships with them. You've really got to get that this idea of respect leads you know, friends and family members to not speak to each other for 20 years. Right? Your friends and family for 20 years, and all of a sudden they do something that you, f you perceive as being disrespectful, and it's done. It's over. Maybe it's just the Italian thing, but I, you know, it's over. Right? It leads people to literally, in, right, in gangs, kill each other. Right? The, being dissed is being disrespected. So communities, uh, you know, uh, gangs, I mean, countries go to war over this issue of respect. The 
reward and recognition programs are meant to increase, we spend money to increase the overall productivity. If we're spending it on the people that are already doing well in their jobs, not saying that we're not supposed to acknowledge them, recognize them, but if they're working at 95%, how much more can they give us? Now, what is the impact of the program on the poor performers? Well, yeah, I mean, or it's nothing, right? It's yet another example of their feeling disenfranchised from the organization. Right? It's, it's an, why should I try to play your game? I'm not going to win at it. I never won at anything you've done here. It's clear that I'm not an appreciated member of this organization. Why would I, why would I put forth effort to achieve some sort of an outcome that is not going to lead me anywhere? Now, here's where the problem comes in. It's all those folks that are in the middle or so, right? the folks where you've got some real potential to re-engage them in your organization, they put forth a little bit of effort, but guess what? They lose. Why? Because the winners are the ones who win. And so they come back and they say, forget about it, right? Why should I bother? All of us have been in places in our lives where we have put forth extra effort. And when it's not recognized, what do you say? Why should I do it again? Why should I bother? So for these, and I think actually a number of other reasons, motivation programs don't work. Now here's, here's the biggest reason they don't work. They don't work, they don't lead to sustained and meaningful changes in employee behavior because they do not impact the culture of the organization, right? Culture leads to behavior. Behavior reinforces culture. That's the way it works. I don't care if it's your job or your church or your school, whatever it is, there's a culture. And when you come into that organization, you either fit into that culture, right? You bend to fit into that culture or you leave. You know how when you go into a company and you know almost instantly, just from the receptionist and your welcoming, what that organization is about? Right? Where people are friendly, they're, they're holding doors open for one another, they're saying hello to one another versus when you go in and people are just walking by as though they don't exist, right? I used to live in um, the South, in North Carolina for eight years. From Jersey originally, moved to South North Carolina for eight years. And during that time, which was um, during college and after, I got really, um, is there a term to be recultured or something, right? But I got into, you know, you walked by somebody you said hello. That's part of the culture. I went from there to New Haven, Connecticut for six years, and I would go and I would say hello to somebody, and they would grab their children, like, right, I was going to do something horrible to them. It's unbelievable. And that's just in the United States, right? That's not talking about the rest of the world. So even within our organizations, we have very different kinds of culture.